Good morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kumia Ross, and today I have a great message for you. It's called Destroying Financial Bondage. And, you know, I've been frustrated, you know, over the past few months. Well, the Lord had been leading me to pretty much let go of the jobs that I was working for certain corporations and I'd always had it ingrained in myself that I had to have a job. In order to have money, I needed to work for someone. I needed to, you know, be collecting a paycheck from someone. And I always felt financially secure as long as I had a great job where I was making decent money. And the Lord started trying to get me out of that. And, you know, he wanted me to move away from that and have my own because he put it in my spirit to have my own things. But I was too afraid to walk away and I wanted the comfort and security of having a job. But I didn't realize that my job that I was holding on to was actually bondage, collecting a paycheck and working for someone else, being pretty much a slave for them, being confined and restricted to all these hours. I wasn't able to do the things that God wanted me to do, that he was blessing me to do. He gave me the gifts and talents to do these things. He placed the anointing on my life and these companies were a hindrance. Not only that, a lot of these companies have made pacts with the enemy, demonic agreements in order to gain success. And I talk about this a lot in other um, videos if you wanna look at them, but when you're working for these type of companies, the curse falls on you. If a company has offered up itself as the entity is serving Satan and everything was formed through agreements and pacts made with the enemy, then when you work for those companies, curses fall down on you. And I was always wondering why, even though I was making great money, I had a great amount of my checks would look good. I was making a great amount of money. My salary was great, but somehow my money was always gone. I could never you know, manage my money. And the Lord was showing me that my money was being attacked. The enemy was still in my money. And these were curses because of the fact that I was getting money from a demonic entity. And so the Lord wanted me to move on and, and find my own, you know, go into business for myself. And so when I did this, I, I stepped out and, you know, I started working. I was becoming frustrated because I was doing the things God told me to do, but I didn't see any type of financial growth. I didn't see any increase. I didn't see a harvest. So I was sewing and putting money into, you know, the things God wanted me to do, my working on my own craft, honing my skills, but I wasn't seeing the increase come in. And so that's what I want to talk to you about today because a lot of you have been instructed to do things. God has a call in your life. You're sitting at a job right now where it's pretty much bondage. You're working for demonic companies who have offered themselves up to Satan. They made pacts with the devil. These are evil demonic organizations and they're pretty much putting you in a bondage by working for them. God wants you to step out and you know who you are. You know who you are. If you've been filling in your spirit, God is showing you to do things. We all have different gifts, okay? Whether you know how to exercise and you're certified, you can have your own personal training business. You can work out for yourself. You can go into business for yourself. You know how to do hair. You know how to, um, you know, you have different skills that people can utilize. You can go into business for yourself. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to be in a situation where we're in any type of bondage. Now, the enemy has come cleverly to a point where he wants everyone in this world to serve him. The devil wants everyone to worship him. And like I talked about it before, there is a lot of organizations out here, Freemason and Illuminati and all these things that will pretty much try to cut you off and, and make you feel like you have to serve Satan. You have to join these groups to succeed. And, you know, a lot of people get stuck in that lie, but that's a lie of the enemy. Everything in this earth belongs to God. I'm about to read you a scripture right now. And I'm reading here from the book of Haggai. Uh, chapter 2 verse 8 in the King James Version it says the silver is mine and the gold is mine saith the Lord of hosts and also we're going to look at Psalm 24 chapter I mean sorry verses 1 through 2 and it says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods and that was the King James Version we want to go back and read the New International Version because it breaks it down a little bit easier it says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for he founded it on the sea and established it on the waters. So the Lord first says in Haggai, the silver and gold, it belongs to him. Everything in this, that means everything, all wealth, all riches belong to God. Everything in this earth that belongs, all the resources that come to this earth, everything came through God. He put everything in this earth for us to use, for resource for man to build up. And what man have done, greedy men have, 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 
laid claim to these things and, and distributed it to certain groups of people and they want to hoard it all for themselves so that others won't have any means to thrive and basically they want to keep people dependent upon them and that your wealth is contingent upon what they allow you to have and that is not what God wants. He made it a way for every man to obtain his riches, for every man to have for themselves and we're not supposed to be walking around here broke, busted, disgusted, broke down, living oppressed, waiting on a, a weekly paycheck or a monthly paycheck, living paycheck to paycheck, not having anything, that it, it, not making our ends meet. We're not supposed to be living oppressed financially. And any time where we feel burdened financially, it is something demonic because God did not create us to live demonically in bondage. We're not supposed to be living in any type of financial bondage whatsoever. So if you have to get payday loans, if you have to wait on a government check, if you have to, if your credit is poor, if you have to borrow and get loans, that's, that's bondage. We're not supposed to even be borrowers. We're supposed to be actually lenders. Okay, so let's just go. This is God's people I'm talking about. When you're a child of God, there are certain benefits that are allotted to us. And the thing is, when we don't know what those benefits are, they're securely kept. We have to unlock the benefits, but in order to unlock them, we have to be mindful and aware of what those benefits are. If we're foolish to the benefits that we have, and we're not reading our word, then we're not going to know what is allotted to us. Now, there are some contingencies that need to be fulfilled. There are some prerequisites that need to be fulfilled in order for these contingent, in order for these benefits to be released. And I'm going to go into that right now. We're looking at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses four through six. This is the King James Version. And it says, say when there should be no poor among you, for the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. For the Lord thy God blesseth thee as he promised thee, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. And thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. So let's go back and look at that. What did it say again? It says, for the Lord thy God blesseth thee as he promised thee, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. So lend means when you're giving to someone, you have the resources, you have an abundance of resources where you're not put in a position to give unto others. You should be lending unto them, not borrowing. We're not supposed to be beggars. We're not supposed to be borrowers. We're supposed to be the blessed ones. But guess what the prerequisite was? Remember, he said only. You know, you have to hearken unto the voice of the Lord and observe to do all his commandments. So when Christians are not walking in the statutes, when they're breaking God's commandments and you're not seeking Jesus Christ and you're not renouncing these sins and repenting, that is when we close the door on us receiving those promises. So that's why you see some of the, the Christians, either you are not aware or there's been curses on your life for past sins and these curses have not been broken because the sins have not been renounced, they have not been repented of and the door is still open so the enemy is now attacking our finances. And the Lord already showed me a long time ago that there were so many generational curses on my life due to sins that my ancestors have committed, due to sins that I committed when I was, you know, walking in ignorance and was being rebellious and disobedient and you know, there was a door that was open. Now, when you renounce of these sins and you're no longer walking in rebellion, okay, now you can be restored, but the enemy is still going to try and fight you. But you have to know what the Bible says. This is why we have to know the word. First of all, when you're sitting here living paycheck to paycheck, you're supposed to say what the word says. You're supposed to decree that I should not be a borrower. I'm not supposed to be living paycheck to paycheck. I'm supposed to have more than enough. I should have enough that I can lend to others. I should have enough that I should be living in abundance because Lord, you said this, we're supposed to quote that word and tell the enemy to release our finances right now in the name of Jesus. You release my business right now in the name of Jesus. And we're not supposed to be the tales. Let's continue on reading. I'm reading now uh, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 12 through 13 King James Version. It says, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thee unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thine hand and thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow once again we're supposed to be lenders and not borrowers and the lord shall make thee the head and not the tail and thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the lord thy god which i command thee this day to observe and to do them so notice he said we're supposed to be the head so the head is the one that gives the instructions everything comes from the brain your head you see through your head, you, you think with your head, you talk with your head, the tail follows the head. 
We're supposed to be the leaders. We're supposed to be the head. We're supposed to be an authority, not the other way around. And so the devil has taken advantage of the fact that many Christians are like myself. We were ignorant to this. And not only that, we were rebellious, living in disobedience and not hearkening to the commandments of God and walking in our own way. And so the devil has cleverly taken advantage of this and made it seem as if his children are supposed to be in the head. Those who belong to him and serve him. And that's completely opposite. God has made it. He has enforced in his word right here. If you're a Christian and you believe in the word, I have it here right here in the app on my phone. I like to use it. And I also have this word right here because I'm in this word every day. Okay. I'm in this word every day. And this is a, I love this Bible by the way. Um, but anyway, if you're in that word, you're going to know what it says. You're going to know everything that it says. You're going to look at it. And if you don't know what it says, you're going to seek God. You're going to seek his Holy Spirit. You're going to pray, Lord, show me, Lord, why is this happening? And so I was frustrated. And so the Lord started reminding me of what his scripture says, that I'm supposed to be a lender and not a borrower. I'm supposed to be above and not beneath. I'm supposed to be the head and not the tail. I am not supposed to be borrowing from anyone. I'm not supposed to be living in, in lack because he died for me to have an abundant life. He died for me to have prosperity. And even though I felt comfort in those jobs, it was not for me. God did not want me there because he wanted to take me to a higher level. He wanted to move me to newer heights. And I was holding on to what I felt comfortable with. And that's what some of us do. We feel comfortable with something. And so we're afraid to let go because we don't know what's on the other side. And we're afraid. We're, we're wondering what's what it is. And we want to step out. But God is telling you to move and to trust in him. It's like when the Israelites are going to the promised land they were leaving the old and they were going to embrace the new but it was a strange thing to them it was strange but they had to step out on faith and they had to believe that God was taking them to a better place that he wanted them somewhere better God's not going to tell you to leave something and then leave a door open for you to, 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 to fall apart and have nothing when God tells you to move and to let something go he, believe me he has something better in store he has something greater for you but you have to let go. You have to learn how to trust. You have to learn how to be obedient. You have to learn how to walk in faith and, and, and not lay onto your own understanding what's up here in your mind. And that's what I was doing. God was trying to bless me, but I wanted my job. I'm mad. Like, God, why are you tell me to leave my job? But here he is trying to bless me. He's trying to open new doors of abundance in my life. He's trying to move me to a higher level where now I'm writing my own checks and writing checks for other people and not waiting on somebody to give me a check every two weeks. And that is where God is trying to take many of us, many of you who are sitting here looking at this video right now. He's telling you to move out and step out on faith and come out of Egypt, come out of the bondage so he can take you into the promised land. And when are you going to step out? When are you going to allow God to move you forward and come out of Egypt? Come out of the bondage. Yes, it's security, but you need to learn how to trust and stand out on faith. And yes, the waters might be moving. The waters might not be still at first. They might be going and, and, and you know, the wind is crashing. The waves are moving and tossing you to and fro. But then you look to him. You look to your redeemer. I was thinking like, Lord, you have to make... I, what are you going to, Lord, he's, he's, I'm providing, he says, trust me, his voice, his, his spirit is saying, trust, it might be a very peaceful, quiet voice, but the Lord is saying, trust, and sometimes, you know, I, I am human, sometimes I doubt myself, and God has to bring me right back and say, you know what, I'm Jehovah Jireh, I'm your provider, I will provide all of your needs according to my riches and glory. That's what the scripture says. He is Jehovah Jireh. And when things are not coming in, you're supposed to say, Jehovah, I'm standing on your word, Lord. I'm trusting you, Father. Supply my needs, Lord. You know what I need? I need abundance. He said the works of our hands should be blessed. We shall receive rain in due season. We receive our harvest when it's due time. He will bless us in a due time. So, I'm going to make a, I'm going to say a prayer because a lot of people are probably in bondage and you need to hear this. And, and <sighs> dearly father, Lord, I mean, if you're believing for anything, just disagree in this prayer. I'm going to say this prayer. Dearly father, Lord, I'm asking that you come to me, Lord, as you will fill me with your Holy Spirit, father. 
And Lord, you know who are listening to this prayer right now, Father, and they're in any type of bondage, financial bondage and burdens and hindrances. Lord, I'm asking that you would destroy the bondages from off of them right now. We destroy those bondages and those heavy yokes and burdens that have been keeping them in poverty, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking that you will lift them, Father, that you'll lift them out of that spiritual death, Father, that you'll lift them out of their financial graves, that everything that was been, been buried, all of their potential, Lord, all of their, 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 their intelligence, all their talents, all of their knowledge, Lord, that you will be resurrected, Father, and that you will give them new ways of, of earning and obtaining money, Father, that you will supply all of their needs according to your riches and glory, Father, that you will plant the seeds and give them a harvest in due time, that the rain shall come, Father, that all droughts are moved, Father, that the enemy cannot keep them in a drought, that the enemy cannot keep them in a bondage in the name of Jesus. I command that all financial burdens and all financial lack must depart from these individuals now, from every soul who is listening to it, that you will break the shackles of bondage from off of them in the name of Jesus. I speak financial liberation over them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you say you will bless us and we shall be blessed. I decree in the mighty name of Jesus that they shall be blessed. They shall be lenders and not borrowers as your word says. They shall be the head and not the tail, Father. They shall be above and not beneath in the mighty name of Jesus. We command all principalities that are fighting to keep them in bondage to loose there in the name of Jesus. Come off of their lives and loose them mighty in the mighty name of Jesus. Break free. Every chain of bondage, loose them now. We destroy the cords of bondage from over every individual in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it. In the name of Jesus, receive your financial freedom. In the mighty name of Jesus, decree it. Proclaim it now. You are free. Whosoever the Son says free is free indeed. God did not die. Jesus Christ did not die and shed his blood on that cross for you to be in a financial prison. And the enemy is a liar. And we command every principality, every host of hell to get off of your finances, to get off of your business, to get off of your ministries, to get off of your gifts, to get off of your talents, to get off of your bank account, to get off of your finances, everything that you have. The enemy must loose it now in the mighty name of Jesus. You tell him to scatter now in Jesus' mighty name. Now. If you believe and decree it, you keep trusting in God and you step out on faith and be obedient, you will see the change. You will see the abundance in your life. In Jesus' mighty name.